Hello crypto cats, my name is Tom, I am the crypto investor and it's time for our weekly market roundup. We start as ever with the heat map of the top 100 coins in crypto and you can see that overall it is red. We had that big crash last Tuesday and we'll go into that in a bit. We have Ethereum down 11% in the last seven days, Bitcoin down 10% in the last seven days. Overall most tokens, many of the alts down 15-20% to 20%, but there's one big exception over here and that big exception is these layer ones layer one alternatives really you've got terra luna up 22 percent um avalanche up 25 percent uh algo cosmos uh even tezos up 50 percent some amazing elrond up 61 percent some amazing moves for these layer ones hiding behind me here we've got dot up 13 percent solana down nine percent after its meteoric move in the last weeks before so what is going on and let's have a look at that and discuss it and by the way you can also see that this is now different we used to have bitcoin down here but layer one has made such a big move that the total market cap has now moved bitcoin over here so we've even had this kind of layout change by the way if you do like the content if you do get any value from what i put out then please do smash the like button plus subscribe and also alerts. Also comments. I do like to hear your comments. All right, so you can see that, as I was saying, it is these layer ones that are dominating. So um, really, that's all, all there is. It's the, the same kind of story as what I was showing you on the heat map. And um, we will look at what is going on shortly. So first of all, just to talk about news, there's not really that much coming up in the coming week. Um, Tezos are doing an AMA. I've got a feeling that there's going to be some kind of Alpha release this um, on this call today, just by the, the the big movement and anticipation that we have seen in the price of Tezos. I think it's as well as that fifty percent. It was up thirty uh, percent the few days before because we're recording this late on a Tuesday. I'm sorry for the delay. Um, so it's up nearly ninety percent, I think, in the last ten days. Um, but otherwise, really not too much to share with you. We have the digital summit in New York uh, today and tomorrow. So we have a few of the DeFi tokens presenting there. Um, but that's really it. The big news, of course, last week was for Cardano. Uh, they released their smart contracts. And it, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a case of uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. The price has not really shone too much on the back of that. But it also has been a, a tough week in crypto. So you can forgive them as well. But we'll look at that in a bit. And jumping into the um, the burn, looking at Ethereum, we had the largest amount of Ethereum burnt uh, ever. In fact, I can present it to you somewhat better. Here we go. So you can see this is the number of Ethereum created. This is the Ethereum burnt. And for the first time ever, Ethereum became deflationary. This was on the 4th of September. It ended up being deflationary for many more days. It was almost deflationary for the entire week overall. In fact, I believe that it was 90% deflationary. So if you look at um, uh, Watch the Burn, this is the net reduction. This is on the last seven days, but if we'd taken seven days previously, before uh, three days ago, then this was up at 90%. So 90% of the new tokens created were burnt, effectively. And so, yeah, it was deflationary for a number of those days. Quite amazing to see. And so, you know, there's a lot of... I think we're seeing this big layer one success because there is a lot of murmurs around, you know, well, Ethereum's clearly not scalable because uh, it's so damn expensive, it's almost unusable. And it is, in the short term, somewhat unusable because there's so much demand for that block space. That's why it's expensive, because everyone wants to use it. So the, you know, NFTs are more, they require more computational power than a standard transaction because they're more complex. And so that's what's been driving it um the, the gas price is up so high making it almost unmanageable but we have layer twos to the solution and we have eve 2.0 to the solution and i'll just come back to this looking at the layer twos quickly you can see that arbitrum has just had this massive monumental move uh, up 3200 percent in its adoption in the last seven days 2.2 billion now locked in arbitrum so this is basically bundling those ethereum transactions into one and so you can get hundreds of people's transaction moved into, into one at the same time, which is going to re reduce the block space needs on Ethereum and hopefully help to scale it. So that's one thing that's happening right now. And the, you know, the rate of that adoption is going to be very important on the um, effectively the, the price of Ethereum. And then, of course, March, April, we do have that layer two, um, sorry, that 2.0 merge rollout. 
All right, so yeah, I wanted to look at this. If you look at the, these, these are all the layer two tokens, sorry, layer one tokens, and you look at their change um, year to date, you can see that Solana, of course, has run away with it of 9,000% this year. Uh, Phantom as well, incredible numbers. Terra Luna um, has 5,500%. Uh, and, and, you know, we can, if you come back to, to find Ethereum basically this year versus its other layer one um challenges challenges it's pff, epoxy 350 percent it's not even worth getting out of bed for is it um and so you know there has this been incredible run-up in all these other layer ones um eclipsing uh, ethereum which of course you know already is has a lot of its value um and so i want to talk a little bit about what's going on there and why you know why maybe these don't necessarily represent that good value anymore compared to Ethereum. So the first is the you know the network effect. One of the most important things to understand is how um, how much use how much is being built on a layer one solution because you can you can have the best layer one in the world that actually does seem to be um, secure and scalable um, and decentralized, but unless people use it, unless people trust it unless it's, it's, it's got a good use case, it's not going to succeed. And Ethereum has that, you know, it has, of course, huge amounts of developers on it. You can see it out here compared to the likes of Cosmos, Bitcoin, Polkadot, Tezos. Now, this is from April, and I really, really, really want to find an updated version of this graph and see um, what the current state of affairs is now, nearly six months later. But you can see that back in April, uh, Ethereum was just heads and shoulders um, when it came to the network effect of developers building on it. Um, and so that really is something that has helped it to um, stand out. And then the other thing to really consider is the revenues that are generated. And so this is looking at Solana in the last, well, let's look at the last 90 days. And you can see that the revenues that Solana's been making have been increasing significantly. Um, just off in the last few days but overall of course the trend is massively up for revenues on Solana but then you realize wait a minute 135 grand a day well that's kind of peanuts really isn't it if we look at the last seven days for Ethereum and Axie Infinity I mean Ethereum's done a quarter of a billion Axie Infinity's done 63 million and then where's Solana well, here you go in the last seven days Solana's done half a million so sorry, yeah, half a million. So it really isn't um, making much money. You know, it's very, very cheap to, to use. And so <laughs> you have to consider that. I think that Solana is getting excellent traction. Um, you know, we have we have cool projects being built on it now. We have the likes of Star Atlas promised as well. Um, so I really do think Solana could easily become the home for uh, for the kind of lower cost, lower security, high volume transactions. So like in-game NFTs, um, but I can't see it being the home for like very high value NFTs, you know, like your crypto punks and such. They're certainly not going to be migrating across and future high value NFT projects. I can't see them being on Solana. And I also can't see very valuable DeFi projects being on Solana because there's that counterparty risk of it being less decentralized. So I see it having the place for low cost, high volume stuff and Ethereum um, remaining on top for, for the big stuff. And, you know, we're going to live in a multi-chain world. It's gonna, There's going to be, you know, I imagine Ethereum probably still will hold a 70-80% uh, market share and then, and then you'll just have, you know, 100 different blockchains for different use cases. Um, but anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. So what have we missed? Have we missed anything? Let's move on. All right, so um, we have NFT. We've been going for this NFT mania. It's just easing off a little bit. Um, you know, after four days of going down in value, NFTs are now apparently in the winter. Um, but um, Sam Bankman Fried Friedman, uh, owner of FTX, has made their stride into it, saying they can. you can now build NFTs on FTX. Um, and these will also be cross-chain. They're going to be on Ethereum and Solana as well. So he's a bit, you know, he's a Solana fanboy. So it's interesting to see that he's making that cross chain. But FTX token's been doing really well on the back of that. Um, the token is FTT. I do hold it. I think it's an excellent token. I think that they are going to continue to gain market share from from the likes of Binance and other exchanges. Um, for me, they just innovate so quickly. He's a great visionary. Um, if you're looking to invest in a crypto bank, if you will, then yeah, FTT is a great place to look. 
Um, some interesting news this week is that uh, the court has ruled in favour of Epic, Epic Games versus Apple, and basically this was the idea was that Apple were trying to keep a monopoly of all payment um, payments on their App Store being through the uh, Apple Payment Pro- Protocol, um, and they've effectively said that it doesn't have to be anymore, which this article um, can what's the word I want, um, basically concludes that uh, that it could mean that um, you can use crypto rails for payment apps on Apple, um, which could be have enormous consequences for um, for the crypto space if any app within the um, App Store can um, accept crypto for payment. So we could see a massive spin-off on the back of this. This could be a little genesis moment. Uh, Apple stock did drop 4% on the back of that news on Friday um, as they lose that little monopoly they have there. We had this crazy news on yesterday, on the 13th, that Litecoin were partnering with Walmart, uh, only to find out that it was fake news that had been well, allegedly a hack, who knows. Um, but Litecoin also even posted it on their Twitter, um, and then it has now been said that uh, Walmart confirms this partnership is indeed fake. So we saw the market pump and then dump on the back of this. Um, so we saw a... You know, we saw this big crash happen on Tuesday, and this was tweeted just before that, about 10 hours before that crash. This is the number of futures um, going long, effectively, on the price of Ethereum, and it hit a high, higher than we had seen back in May before the crash. Um, and sure enough, just as we got up here, we have had the crash, and so we've got that flush out. Um, and, you know, if you look at the... Um, we had $2.6 million worth of positions that were liquidated in the last... Uh, over this hour of of that crash and you know these are like thunderstorms in the market these are healthy um, corrections that are needed to flash flush out all of the extra leverage that is in the system so it just something that had to happen and um, and that's why we get such dramatic moves is when you get all this leverage flushed out and one last thing to discuss was that Brian Armstrong founder of coinbase um, put this amazing thread out uh, basically, this came out on the 8th, the day after. I think that the crash may have been whales basically having insider knowledge within Coinbase that the SEC were going to be... And you're always looking for a news catalyst of why these things happen. Sometimes they do just happen. It is a market. Um, but perhaps it was to do with insider knowledge on this. Um, but the SEC are bullying Coinbase. They're saying that their lending protocol, offering 4% yield um, for, for lending out your crypto... Um, is uh, not acceptable because it's a security um, and so the SEC are effectively blocking this um, this lending protocol on Coinbase uh, which is really interesting. They're threatening to take Coinbase to court and I think Coinbase are going to say all right and, uh, and call their bluff and actually go to court on this and it's going to be interesting to see how this develops but you know crypto is standing up to the SEC the SEC seem to be effectively protecting the incumbent banking system rather than looking to help the people. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this develops. But we also have Gary Gensler uh, testifying today. His transcript is um, looking quite negative by all accounts as well. So there's more and more, you know, the biggest headwind which we do face in this industry is the growing uh, regulatory um spider web that one has to crawl through it'll be interesting to see how this develops let's jump into the charts all right so the first thing we have of course we had that big crash the first thing to talk about i've cleaned up this chart for bitcoin and just left on the 250 day moving average because we're about to get do you remember the um, death cross that we had back in june well we're about to get the antithesis we're about to get the golden cross the golden cross is normally a technical indicator that signifies the beginning of a bull market. Um, and unless, you know, Bitcoin can drop 20,000 in the next um, day or two, which I hope it doesn't do, then we're about to see in the next day or so this golden cross happen, which is generally a very, very bullish sign um, and could, you know, be what helps, well, indicative of what may propel us um, well up towards 100,000 or so. So golden cross, nice to have. Let's put some lines back on that chart. In fact, let's get rid of our moving averages. 
Okay, and you can see that, of course, we got that big, we broke 50,000. It looked like we were heading towards all time highs, and then we got that massive flush out. And you just have to have these flush outs. You know, it's not, doesn't mean we're moving into a bear market, even though the sentiment has gone somewhat negative again. It's, can't go up in a straight line forever um, and so we've come back down we found some support coming in at 44,200 we're consolidating we're building up a base we've got some nice wicks which are indicative of of good buying pressure and and I think you know we probably go back and forth here and then we eventually move back up but every time you get a drop you know it's like someone doing a cannonball into a lake and it stirs up all the silt and you just have to wait for it to settle before we go back up it's um it, it just is as, as it is, you know, people get nervous and so it takes some time for confidence to return. So I expect us to consolidate it to be boring, perhaps another for a week or two, and then we'll start to hopefully move back on up from here. Looking at Ethereum, so this is Ethereum on the, let's take on to the weekly chart. Oh, that's a pretty messy chart, isn't it? Come on, Tom. So we have, we had that big old engulfing candle, that sell off. Um, and now this week so far, uh, we have quite a nice hammer forming. So, you know, if we can get above uh, 3,400 for the week, that'd be a really nice sign. As I said, we've got some nice long candle wicks, which is a good sign of buyers in the market. So hopefully we move up from there. Just looking on the eight hour chart. Um, the only negative thing to say is that we do have a series of lower highs. Ever since the crash, we managed to put high 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 and they're all lower highs and we also putting in a series of lower lows so in the shorter term we are in somewhat of a bearish pattern um, you know if I could clone this you can see quite clearly we're kind of in this channel downwards and until we can break above this one which I'll just highlight for you then we you know that's the first line of repair that we need so we need to see this get above here and then we should start to move back up but that's the first thing that needs to happen really um but you know maybe maybe we consolidate sideways again until we until we get that repair but that that repair has to come fairly soon or we are going to get pushed down so bitcoin actually looking slightly more structurally better than ethereum okay looking at ethereum on the bitcoin ethereum ratio we of course had that big old breakout um, on the back of VIP 1559, came and tested the 50% ratio, we've come back and forth, and overall, you know, we're just forming this kind of pennant. It doesn't feel like it's ready to just bounce up and jump up, unless we see those layer two solutions really starting to lower the gas prices and strengthen Ethereum's position. I think it's gonna be under a little bit of threat from the, you know, the growing, um, interest in layer two solutions layer one solutions goodness me so we'll see but it's you know it's not it's not setting the world on fire right now okay so looking at bitcoin's dominance you can see that we were in this effectively a bear flag and we have broken now down below it and bitcoin's dominance is getting historically low uh, we've only ever come back down here, really, excuse me, all this erratic movement. We've been down here for a matter of four or five weeks in Bitcoin's history. It has been this low, and that was right at the peak of the uh, altcoin mania. Now it's a totally different story. We have a much more mature ecosystem. Um, so I do expect eventually this, this, this low to break at 40 and us to make a move down to the 35 or so. And I do think that will break as well. I think... As the rest of this space matures, that we will see Bitcoin more naturally down here in this in this range. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. This is also this chart is a a chart of risk. The more risk in the market, the more people are comfortable to take on risk, the lower the Bitcoin dominance will go. Because even though it's like it seems like a really speculative asset, it's the safe haven asset in this space. Looking at Ethereum's dominance. We failed once more to hold above the 20% ratio. We keep on peaking our head above it, but not holding above it. Um, we have a series of higher lows, and if we lose that series of higher lows, then we might come back down here. Um, but overall, we're kind of in this little wedge pattern, 
and um, hopefully we're going to see Ethereum break this 20% in time. As I said, this is really dependent on the layer 2 roll-ups like Arbitrum and Optimism. But overall, under a bit of pressure at the moment, Ethereum. Okay, so let's look at, talking of under pressure, let's look at DeFi on Ethereum. And you can see that, you know, it has been ugly. So this is the DPI index. This is Aave, Sushi, Compound, um, Synthetics, etc., etc., valued in Ethereum. And you can see that it is at historic lows right now. And for me, this is cheap. I think this actually represents some opportunity. Um, we haven't actually seen DeFi on ETH this low. And as I just said, I think that's where you know a lot of DeFi is going to live on the securest, uh, most decentralized blockchain. And so I think this represents a pretty good buy opportunity into DPI. And this is not financial advice. It's just my opinion. I'm just a guy on the internet, man. But um, I'm personally looking at moving a bit more of my capital into into the DeFi on ETH options now because we've seen most areas pump. We've seen um, the layer ones have a huge pump. Um, we've also seen the DeFi options on those layer ones pump. Um, and we've seen Metaverse pump. So this is the MVI index. This is Metaverse. So this is, you know, Axie and Alluvium and Sandbox and all those guys. That's been pumping. And if you look at MVI, you can see it was channeling very nicely. It was moving really well. And then we came down and we broke this lower channel. And we had a retest and a failure. And MVI has since come back down. You know, maybe it turns around and heads back up here. This is valued in Ethereum, by the way. Or maybe we see MVI kind of lose a bit of its luster for the time being. But for me, it's not a bad time to just be adding to DeFi uh, on Ethereum right now. I think its time is, is, um, is to come. Um, and it's great asset area to be dollar cost averaging into at the moment all right let's just quickly look at solana so we put in that massive peak up at 213 after this monumental 500 percent in five week climb and then we've now had six negative days for solana uh, we did come down yesterday and find support at this 150 level 150 is where solana had previously had a little bit of resistance found support and now it's found support again so we know that that is a, a resistance line and potentially a good time to buy buy in so you can set your orders if you're looking to snap up some solana just above there 152 153 never set your buy orders at those round numbers that's where there's loads of people with the same number as you so you always want to have it just a bit above um if it breaks there then we're probably going to come down to 120 again buy orders around 124 you can see just where that wick actually found support at 123.9 so likely that we will come back down there but i think what we do i think what solana does probably is just consolidate sideways back and forth for a time i can't see us taking out this high anytime really quickly but you also don't want to bet against solana we've all seen what it can do and just looking at solana's dominance so it's up to 2.3 percent it did hit nearly three percent of the total market cap um and uh and yeah, just just coming down a bit now. In fact, I wanted to say one last thing on Solana. We were in this upward channel and we've now lost it. So that means that likely we do consolidate because we were holding that channel for one month, but we have now lost that. So unlikely that we just jump right back up into that upward channel again. Okay, lastly, let's just look at the total market cap of crypto. This is everything put together. We're sitting at two trillion 100 billion uh, so 2.1 trillion and you can see that you know we almost took out the previous peak from may uh, only to come back down um but overall it's it's looking fairly healthy isn't it uh it would have been nice to put in a higher high um you know, maybe maybe we have to come back down here and test this again but uh, overall you know, we are going up and to the right. It's never going to be a straight line. It's always going to be a slightly bumpy journey, but we are moving in the right direction. Okay, that's it for now. As always, this is not financial advice. I'm just a guy on the internet trying to help you out. I hope you found it useful. Um, and I will speak to you soon. Happy investing, everyone.